a story behind this? Yeah, um, that's true. I have a background in, in traditional sports and the story behind my involvement with Astralis. Um, I was contacted by the owner of the team and they were trying to find uh, a good person for working with Astralis and that's how the story started and I traveled to Copenhagen to meet the team and just to get to know them a bit better and uh, have a feel like that if we could sync in a way that it could work because I find it very important to get along with the people you work with and I found out that there were five fantastic persons to to be able to have a very good relationship with. I would say yes, um, but that's not because esports players are difficult. I say that it's because of the field itself is much more challenging. So if if you're looking at uh, traditional esports pro, um, they're traveling much more. Um, it's very hectic lifestyle. The community can be sometimes quite negative. So there's many different aspects compared to a traditional sport that makes it more difficult for them. Uh, sometimes the careers tend to be a bit shorter because players are burnt out or worn out so these kind of factors I have to tackle in my job so yeah it makes it a bit more challenging but I find it fantastic in a way also because you get to learn in your own profession when you have the challenges um, there were many things that we were working on not because we considered them to be problems but it's just the way that I do I'm, I'm curious to learn how an individual work and I'm also curious to know how the team works so uh, we did a lot of individual work with the players to see their strengths and weaknesses and to support them in their growth to become the better version of themselves um, but then again also within the team what's the team spirit how they function together as a group how the trainer is with them um, there were many things even the routines that they had considering practicing and preparing for an event was under the loop so we did a lot of work around everything you're right it's not so common at all i i certainly hope so because there's so much time and effort and even financial matters invested into the team. So I do not understand why they would not take the mental aspect into consideration. Because if you ask a, a pro player how much a uh, result of a game comes from mental factors, they answer 80-90%. So how could you exclude 80-90% to 90 of the factors resulting a victory and say that you do the things the best way you can? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very good question. Uh, frustrations can arise from many different factors. Uh, one of the factors can be your own expectations. So what are you expecting from yourself? Are you expecting to perform in a way that you never do mistakes? Personally, I consider a mistake a chance for learning. Um, the second of, of, of factors that contribute into frustration is that your ability to s sustain negativity and, and things when they don't go the way you're planned. So sometimes if you're slightly immature, your ability to cope that kind of uh, disappointment might not be good. Um, then I would think about the overall approach to the game and also I feel that the people you're playing with has an effect as we all know it's it's a team sport so the people around you for certainly has an effect they can support you or they can put you down as well um, and necessarily you don't need a psychologist for that if, if you're curious and you want to improve you can find the factors for example, frustrations and start working around that. You can even talk to uh, a friend or another gamer who can support you in that. Um, then the fourth thing I would say is that, that start preventing those issues. If you find that you're becoming emotional instead of being rational, you can try to stop the process because I feel that humans can be either emotional or very rational. So uh, in a gaming situation where you become emotional, you kind of like lose control of yourself. Then the emotions arises and, and you're not focusing or concentrating that well. So it's even easier to make a mistake. So for me, always already entering the game, be rational and think about the logical side of things. And now I'm just going to play and I'm going to have a professional attitude towards the entire situation. So perhaps these four factors could 
help you and support you forward. I can't give you more detailed uh, advice because everyone's so individual and there isn't like a common recipe for all people. There's like 300 million people out there playing right now. So I would have to get to know you a bit better to, to pinpoint the issue at hand. I'm trying and I'm, I'm, I'm practicing, but I can't call myself a CSGO player. Um, the guys have been teaching me a bit though, uh, but I just end up dead every time and that's frustrating. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. And the last question is the most important. Will Astralis win the next major? I certainly hope so.